So last time I led, um, I did a guided meditation based on the themes of the Shema and all of the prayers around the Shema. Um, and this time I'm going to do something similar with the Amidara, the Tefillah. So um, the kind of rubric of prayer that is in all Jewish prayer books um, in the morning starts with the morning blessings, which are traditionally done on your own. And it's just kind of presencing gratitude for every little piece of um, life that you get as you wake up to help us all remember that uh, we, we shouldn't take any of it for granted. Um, just the fact that we're waking at all, able to breathe at all, given another chance at, um, at life, a new, a new day, is, is something to presence gratitude for. So maybe another time I'll try to do a, um, a guided meditation based on those themes. Um, but the other, the other rubrics of prayer are the Kriyat Shema, which I did last time. And, and um, I think you all know, but you may not. If you go onto our website, all the previous um, meditations that Rabbi Gross Prince and I have led are now available via audio. So if you want to listen to them again and do them again, um, or you want to listen to this one again, or you miss a couple weeks and you want to go back and hear what we've done, um, they'll be up there and free to listen to whenever you want. Um, they're not with video because we want to make sure you can all see each other while this is happening. And if we put it out with video, all of your faces would be on it too. And I don't know if you all want that. Um, so we're just doing audio. Um, so Kriyat Shema is the last one I did. And it, it, if you look into the prayer book, which is also conveniently on our website at emmanuelnyc.org forward slash broadcast, um, the Kriyat Shema has a blessing for light and uh, thank you to God for creating the entire universe. Then a thank you for the Torah and the capacity to learn. Then we say the Shema, as you all know it, then Ve'a Hafta. Um, then depending upon time of day, there's uh, other blessings. And then it ends with Micha Mocha, as you all know. Um, and that goes immediately into the Amidah in the, um, in the morning and the evening. And in our afternoon prayer called Mincha, it's only the Amidah. Um, so I wanted to try to create a guided meditation that helps to elucidate the themes of the Amidah in a way that is a little bit more um, easily under, not easily, personally understandable, because a lot of the language is a little bit antiquated and it's unclear what it's talking about. And I think that even if you don't understand necessarily what the prayers are getting at and you say them together with other Jews or, or even alone, what you're doing, regardless of understanding, is stepping into the chain of tradition and connection with the people of Israel across time and space. So just in the act of saying these same words, you are in connection with the entirety of the people of Israel, of the Jewish people. Um, but at the kind of next rung, in my experience, if you understand the underlying ethos and the way it all fits together, you're not only connecting with the people of Israel, but you're connecting with the sacred and the divine, because that's the point. Really what the Amidah is, is helping us to connect with God through, um, through both our ancestry and our place in the world. And often the way that I um, think about the difference between the way the Kriyat Shema connects us to God and the Amidah connects us to God is the Kriyat Shema um, connects us to God through um, space. So we start out with um, light and the way that light constru constructs the world. And it's kind of this boiling down of um, the Jewish connection to God from the universal to the particular. And the Amidah picks up with time. So we start with our ancestors and talking and evoking our ancestors, then jump to the future, which is um, in traditional Jewish thought. The idea is that at the end of time, all people will be resurrected. Um, the early reformers kind of kicked that out because they didn't think it was realistic or something that people would connect with. Um, but if we think about it a little bit more metaphorically, which I'm going to try to guide you through, it's still, it, we can understand it a little bit differently. Um, and then there's just a series of blessings to help us understand our 
our um, the way that we connect to God through our um, our perspective on the world and the way that we approach the world. And then it goes to the um, to the future once again, asking for the Messiah to come, um, which once again, the early reformers kind of kicked out because they didn't believe that one person was going to come and save the world, but instead that the um, entirety of the Jewish people working together through the values, ethics, and mores of our tradition would be the force of good that would help the world come together and be unified under one divine idea. Um, I think now we can actually reach back, like I said before, to the origins of these prayers and not necessarily need to take them so literally and therefore not need to kind of separate out the metaphor. Um, but for now, what I'm going to try to do, it's not going to be completely obvious because I'm not going to say, now we're doing this prayer, now we're doing that prayer. It's just go through the themes um, and guide you in a, a meditative approach to these themes. Um, the beginning of the Amidah is Adonai Sefatai. Um, and what the literal translation of, I wouldn't even call it, maybe it's a prayer. Um, what the literal translation of it is, is uh, God open up my lips so that my mouth may declare your praise, which is an interesting give and take in and of itself that we're asking God to kind of help us praise God. So it's internalizing God within our bodies so that God can use our mouths to praise God. So to start out, um, I'm gonna guide us through a little bit of an embodiment practice and help us feel the divine within ourselves before we move on to the rest of the Amidah. So if you're not yet in a comfortable position to begin, um, find a comfortable position. Traditionally, the Amidah is said standing. Um, clearly, I'm not standing. I mean, Amidah literally means standing. So it is a prayer often said standing, but I'm not going to stand at this moment um, because we're doing it in a meditative style. But if you'd like to stand, feel free to. If you'd like to sit, feel free to. If you'd like to lay down, feel free to. The key is to be able to be comfortable and um, feel fully present in your body, but without falling asleep. And if you fall asleep, it's okay. But the goal is to not. Um, so to begin, I'm going to actually readjust my body because I was sitting in kind of a contorted position. And let's take a deep breath. And as we breathe in, imagine a pure white light coming in with the air and circulating from your nose, breathing in through your nose, all the way down to your feet. So you can feel every part of your body filling with this pure air, this pure white light. And if with the first breath, you didn't make it all the way down to your toes, you can feel free to just start it with your sinuses going up into your head pure breath of air, pure white light. And then down to your neck and your throat, feeling it course through to your lungs. And noticing how your breathing feels this morning. Does it feel free and open? Are you a little congested? Just feeling in touch with your body and where you are this morning. Next breath, breathe into your belly, filling it up, softening your belly. If you'd like, with this next breath, stretch out your legs if you can in the position you're in so you can really feel into all the muscles in your legs, your ankles, your toes, your feet. You can also maybe stretch your arms out to the side or up, 
fully stretching all the way through your fingertips, like you're trying to reach and touch something that you can't quite reach. So you can feel all the way into all of the nerves at the ends of your fingers, through your biceps and triceps, through your forearms. And still breathing in, feeling the pure air and the pure white light coursing through your nostrils, into your lungs, into your belly. Feeling that connection, the connection between the breath and the body. And remembering that the Torah tells us the first human was brought to life by God breathing into them. So we too still connect to God through our breath. And if we think about it and imagine it, we can see the breath we take today, pure air of pure white light, being a continuation of that very first breath that God breathed into Adam. And Adam was merely mud. So not only are we connected to the airy breath of God, but we're connected to our earth as well, made from our earth. And through this, we're a part of both spheres, the earthly sphere and the heavenly sphere. And each breath we take is yet another breath from God which means each word we utter is using that breath to form a new reality, to share with others, or to merely cohere our reality for ourselves through the breath that God has given us. And this body, and this breath that each of you have is not only given to you by God, but by your family. Some of us may not precisely know the origins of our families, but our tradition tells us that each of us, after Adam, can trace ourselves back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And these are our well ancestors, our ancestors who have passed on, leaving us a wisdom tradition, connecting us to God and to each other through human wisdom. And we can still evoke them. And we may have other ancestors from more recent times that we connect to, that we identify with. And if they are well, if your connection to them is positive and good, I invite you to imagine greeting them. Bring a memory of them to your mind. Only those ancestors who are healthy and well and mean you well. And if the ancestors of more recent times don't speak to you in that way, I invite you to imagine what, what did Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah look like? What would it feel like to imagine them and to imagine yourself greeting them, thanking them, asking them to continue interceding on your behalf in the past? creating the relationship with God that we now have and have had for millennia. And as you imagine this connection with our ancient ancestors, those ancestors that watch over us and connect us to God, I invite you to shift your time perspective. 
as we each are new incarnations of those ancient ancestors, so too in the future will there be new incarnations of them and of us. And with each passing generation, we pray, each passing resurrection into a new incarnation, we pray the world becomes safer, more compassionate, more loving. As this is part of God's process, we see it in the trees as they change shape and form into spring and the plants that are rebirthed at this time every year, more beautiful than ever before. We connect our past of our ancient ancestors to our imagined future of a more beautiful resurrected world. I invite you to imagine what that might look like for you. And as we are creatures of duration, we exist within the finite. We count time because we exist within time. We see past and future connected as if two ends of a string. But we also are connected to the divine. It stands outside of time. God is eternal and God is one. So that line connecting the two is really just a figment of our mortal imagination. And in the divine and the holiness and the kedusha, it all happens at once. Above that line of time is the holy God that creates it all, within which it all exists. We imagine it being above. Our ancestors imagined the heavens full of God's glory, of angels praising God. But in some ways, what they were attempting to help us see is that outside of time is a completely different realm, one which we can never truly grasp, at least not while bound to this earthly plane. But rather than dwell on the time it takes to reach from our ancient ancestors of blessed memory to our future descendants who will increase the glory of God through love, compassion, and justice in this world, rather than dwelling on the time it takes to get from here to there, can instead dwell on the fact that God exists in all places at all times, maybe slightly separate, but always connected to us. And as we stand in this interim, in this maybe illusory interim between the past and the future, we have the capacity to bring that future closer. And we take this time to ask God to give us the blessings of the necessities to bring that future closer. We ask God to give us each the capacity to see, think, and understand. And we thank God for the capacity to see, think, and understand. We ask God for the capacity to change, to improve, and to do better next time. 
And we thank God for the capacity to change, to improve, and to do better next time. We ask God for grace and forgiveness. And we thank God for that feeling of always having the capacity to be forgiven. We ask God to help us be the change we seek in the world to redeem those who we can redeem. And we thank God for giving us the opportunity to be a redeemer. We ask God for healing, for healing for ourselves, for our loved ones, for the whole world. And we thank God for the capacity for healing. We ask God for a bountiful world that provides for us and allows us to function at our greatest capacity. And we thank God for all of those things around us which sustain us. We ask God to allow us to feel unity with our fellow human beings. And we thank God for even the idea of a common humanity. We ask God to sustain the righteous among us and to give them more power to do their righteous deeds. And we thank God for creating righteousness in the world which we can embody. We ask God for a close connection to God. And we thank God for the connection given to our ancestors and to us today. We ask God for divine leadership, symbols of God amongst us who can help us connect to God. And we thank God for those leaders of the past. We ask God to hear and answer our prayers and the prayers of all people. And we thank God for being close to all those who call out. We ask God to bring us a closer connection to God in the future, a full resonance of God throughout the world. And we thank God for those resonances we can feel today. Thank God for the gift of our lives, for all of the miracles every day which sustain us. We thank God for peace, for goodness, for blessing, and for all compassion that we feel.
May God bless you and keep you. May the light of God's countenance shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God watch over you and bring you peace. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. I now invite you to return to your breath those deep cleansing breaths of pure white light that you felt before. Returning yourself to your body, wiggling your toes and your fingers. Breathing in the space you're currently living within. Opening your eyes if they have been closed allowing yourself to return to the world as it is. Book your toe. Good morning. <laughs>